Good afternoon. My name's David Effler, and I'm pastor of Matthew 6, 33, Open Air Ministry. It's good to be with you again this afternoon. It's good to be uh, saved by God's marvelous grace. Amen. Uh, friend, we're living in uncertain days, and, and I realize that uh, uh, I believe with all of my heart that to soon come to the Lord's night hand, friend, uh, uh, I've never seen wickedness abound like it is out there in the world today, and uh, we see so many things on the TV that uh, that's very disturbing, and uh, uh, sometimes you you can't help but turn it on and, and watch some of that stuff, and and uh, uh, it's hard to believe that a lot of it's true, uh, friend. That the things that are happening out there, these uh, wickedness, friend, knows no boundaries. Uh, it's uh, it's coming out everywhere. Uh, things are happening. I've never seen the love of many wax cold like it is all over the world today. And and uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's a battleground. It is. Uh, we're reminded in the Book of Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God. And uh, and when you've done all, all you can do, stand. And friend, we're standing today, and we're standing on the the truth of God's word. We're standing on the promise. Uh, that God made for us uh, the one day that he would return and receive us uh, unto himself. Amen. But until that day comes, friend, the Bible says that no man knoweth the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Uh, but he also says uh, over there when you see these things taking place, uh, and I believe, friend, with all of my heart, we're, in, we're living in the time of the beginning of sorrows uh, down here in this world. Uh, he said, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. And God has created a beautiful day out there today. And, uh, uh, you know, the sun's shining. And uh, uh, today is uh, getting close to fall of the year. And, and you can feel a little nip of it in the air. And I, I thank God for it. I, I enjoy fall of the year. I like to see what God does and how God paints the, uh, the mountains wherein we live. And, and I tell you, it's just a wonderful time. Uh, there is abundance out there for the wildlife to eat, and, and God has just uh, uh, gloriously took care of them all summer long, and uh, and I praise his wonderful name for that. He's took care of me, too, and I thank him and praise him. Not one time this year have, have I went without a, a meal, and uh, or, if, or if I have went without a meal, it's been by my own choosing. Uh, but, friend, let me tell you something. Uh, God knows, friend. Uh, the situation is everything's in, and, he, and God has not lost control, friend. Uh, regardless to what mankind might will tell you out there, friend, there is a God in heaven, and he cares whether that you live or die, friend, and he's sending the gospel message uh, across the airways so that you can uh, know uh, how to be saved by God's marvelous grace. Amen. Now, we're going to get back into the book of... Uh, uh, Revelations today, chapter 3, and uh, this will be, uh, I guess, about the fifth verse, and I'm going to try by the help of the Lord today, and I, so I know I've said that all week uh, for the last four or five weeks, but we want to get into verse 5 and 6 today, and uh, uh, verse 6 is, you know, it's pretty easy, it's, uh, uh, well, I said it's pretty easy, we, we may elaborate on that quite a bit. Uh, because it's something that you and I, uh, sometimes we uh, refuse to listen. And we'll talk on that just a little bit uh, when we get into it. But we appreciate you tuning in today. And, and I hope and pray that uh, uh, this verse of Scripture we'll be covering today, uh, verse 5 and 6, these two verses of Scripture will be a blessing to your heart and soul. It's uh, <clears throat> a blessing in the first chapter of the book of Revelations on the reader <clears throat> the person that reads uh, the the Word of God and the, and the, the book that God has given uh, for us to tell us what things is going to be taking place uh, down in the last days when God reveals Himself uh, to His people Israel, friend, and uh, 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 hits the revelation and the revelation, friend, that uh, is given uh, to the children of Israel to reveal to them the very Son of God, and one of these days, friend, as we mentioned last week, uh, they will behold the one in whom they pierced, 
And uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Philippians that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, friend, uh, that he is the Son of God. I make a, a pretty broad statement sometimes, but I believe with all of my heart when the rapture of the church takes place, uh, every nation under the sun, friend, will know it. You say, how do you know that, preacher? Uh, he said, uh, because uh, all of those little ones that are innocent, uh, friend, that uh, the one that's being carried in the womb, uh, all the way up to the age of accountability when Jesus comes back to receive the church, friend, those little ones are going with him. Amen. Uh, they're innocent before God. Amen. And God gave them, and God's going to receive them back, friend, and, and we'll, they'll leave with us. Uh, when the church goes, amen, and uh, those families, regardless to what their faith and their belief is and what kind of God they have, uh, they walk into that home where those little ones were and they'll be gone, friend, uh, all over this world. So you can't tell me uh, that it won't shake this earth like it's never been shook before, friend, uh, and God's going to. He's going to shake it, friend, one of these days. Not only that, uh, friend, that uh, heaven's going to be shaken also. And uh, there's some scripture concerning that. Uh, amen. There's, uh, uh, when God says, son, go get your children. And, and at the voice of an archangel and the sound of the trump, uh, the Bible says that the dead in Christ will rise first. And we which are alive and remain will be caught up together to be with the Lord. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, the Bible says that this corruptible, what you're looking at here this morning, uh, amen, I would to God that you could see my heart and, and see what uh, uh, the purity of my heart through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, I, according to the book of John, uh, I'm without spot and blemish before God, friend, today when he looks at me, and I, and I thank him and praise him for that. This body that you look at, it'll sin. Uh, probably today, and it'll come short of the glory of God. And for no other reason, those things that I would do, I do not. Paul penned that in the book of Romans, chapter 7 over there. Uh, and, and that's about like the same thing as the sin of omission. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. To him personally, that is sin. My friend, so, uh, you know, you and I as children of God today, uh, this these messages to the church, they mean something. Uh, and uh, this is the age that it talks about here when the church uh, had a, uh, well, let me read verse one to you once again. And, and just in case you're tuning in for the first time, uh, friend, this is uh, uh, the message to the church of Sardis. It's in uh, Revelation chapter three, verse one. Listen to what it says. It says, unto the angel of the church in Sardis write these things, saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, uh, and the seven stars. He says, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and are dead. Amen. Now, this series of messages that we've been bringing out uh, on, the, on the church of Sardis, in chapter 3 of the book of Revelations, we've entitled them the dying church. Uh, or you could call it uh, that uh, the dead church, if you wanted to. Uh, right after the time that uh, at the end of the of, uh, of the, I guess you could call it the Catholic, the Catholic rule uh, on the world. There was a period of time, men, a lot of men were ignorant. Uh, and I'm not saying that they were ignorant or stupid or anything like that there, but, but, but because of the dark ages and because of the, the way that people lived back in those days, a lot of them never had an opportunity uh, to get an education. And uh, they were ignorant in that way that they couldn't read. They couldn't, uh, uh, didn't know a whole lot of things. And they only, uh, they went by what they were told. And uh, uh, there was a period of time that uh, there was a lot of stuff uh, and a lot of bad stuff done in the name of the, in the, name of the church. And uh, friend, history records all this if you want to take time to look all of that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot, some of it's pretty dark, uh, amen. But through it all, friend, through it all, uh, God has always had a remnant of people that, that, uh, that toes the line, uh, walks the straight and narrow way, 
that that does those things that is that has to be done. In other words, God's had a remnant of people that are truly saved by God's marvelous grace that has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God down inside of them. And uh, these times that those people are weak, and we'll uh, we'll get on that just a little bit. I'm going to read you some scripture over in the book of 1 Corinthians here just a little bit, uh, chapter 3, or try to quote it. I don't know, whatever God gives to me on it. Uh, but anyway, I, I appreciate the, the study of this, and, and I hope and pray that when we get into these ver this verse of Scripture here just in a moment, it'll be a blessing to you. All right, if you've got your Bibles and you want to read along with us, turn to the uh, book of Revelation, chapter 3, uh, verse 5. Listen to what it says. It says, He that overcometh uh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name. Uh, out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. Now, last week we got into this just a little bit. Amen. Boy, we didn't get much into the depth of it. I want to deal just a little bit this morning with the overcomer. Uh, uh, you and I today that are saved by God's marvelous grace, uh, within ourselves, friend, you and I cannot, we're no match for Satan. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, Satan has been, was empowered and is empowered uh, by God, friend. All power in heaven and earth uh, was given by God. You say, you mean God give Satan his power? Yes, he did. And, and yes, he does give him his power. And it, it's for a reason. And uh, uh, the reason that, uh, uh, I, now this is my personal theology. Let's just take it that. I don't have any Bible for this. But uh, this is my personal theology. I believe uh, that without the, the, uh, sat the satanic power uh, or that that comes on us daily, uh, friend, just in a little while we would be like Satan uh, it was back in the beginning over there. He sought to exalt himself above the throne of God and God cast him out. Now, Satan was uh, uh, one of the anointed cherubims. In other words, one of the angels of God that he made. Uh, he had a position of authority. Uh, the Bible says in one place that he was the light bearer. Uh, another place over there, it, it's mentioned, I believe, that he was uh, uh, the, uh, the choir leader or the chief musician. Uh, in another place, it was recorded that uh, he was very beautiful. Uh, and and uh, uh, not only that right there, uh, but Satan uh, had something very special, amen. Uh, he had the ability uh, to think uh, for himself. Now, uh, regardless to what a lot some people say, you know, angels are not absent-minded, friend. They're not just... Uh, they're not just programmed, and, and they've got one little program that they carry out and everything. They have the ability to make a decision. You say, how do you know that? Well, when you read into the book of Revelation, chapter 12, uh, it talks about, let me read that just a, a, a few words in that this morning to you. And, uh, uh, and I'll not get too deep into that, hopefully, uh, but it's hard for a, a pastor uh, if you've spent the most of your life of reading and studying in the Word of God, uh, when you begin to look into things, uh, it, uh, uh, it just gets bigger and bigger. But in Revelation chapter 12, listen to these verses of Scripture, and then I'll make a little brief comment on it, and we'll go back to our, our Scripture verse. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, uh, uh, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown, of 12 stars. Now it's talking about uh, the children of Israel, uh, God's bride over in the beginning, uh, the people that he chose. Uh, the, he said over in the, in the Old Testament that they became the apple of his eye. Uh, amen. But listen to what it says. And she being with child, uh, uh, being with you know, child, carried travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, uh, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, which uh, he did cast them into the earth. 
uh, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to devour her, was ready to, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child uh, who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up uh, into God uh, and into his throne. Now, those verses of scripture there, about five verses that I read, uh, gives a description. Uh, you can take that and go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And, and it covers plumb all the way the history of, of the Word of God. Simple as that. But it talks about over there that Satan uh, failed. In other words, they, that uh, of the red dragon, uh, he was created by God. Uh, and uh, he was brought uh, and he was given uh, uh, rule over the known universe. Simple as that. Uh, he was the light bearer. And uh, uh, he was... Uh, uh, you know, he, he had authority, and to have authority, he also uh, was able to make decisions. Well, he decided one day that he would exalt himself above the throne of God. In other words, he wanted uh, the number one position, uh, and God writ, wrote, and, and you'll find it over in the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. He is a jealous God, friend, the one we serve today, and uh, even... Lucifer, and, and uh, in the day and time that he was created, uh, and the position that he had, and the authority he had, when he sought to exalt himself uh, above the, the throne of God, God cast him out into this earth, and, uh, and took away uh, a lot of his majesty, and a lot of his honor, uh, and all of these things, and Satan became the father of lies, and he is a liar today. Uh, friend, you'll find out that uh, God is truth, uh, and in him is no lie, friend. So there's been a battle of rage in all of these years. And friend, now, to make clear what I said just a little while ago, uh, we need uh, that opposing power in our lives, friend, uh, that'll help us because, you know, uh, when you look at this word here in verse 5, let's look at it again. He that overcometh. Amen. Let's stop right there. There's a comma uh, in the word of God. And uh, sometimes when you see a comma, you need to stop with that little phrase and give it just a moment uh, to sink into you, uh, to your mind and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. He that overcometh. Well, I've, be I've become uh, an overcomer, not with my own strength, not with my own ability, uh, my strength and my ability uh, and my nature. Uh, is to be a, a self-centered, uh, self-indulgent, uh, self-controlling, uh, you know, uh, type of person. We're hunter-gatherers by nature. Amen. We, we're jealous by nature. Uh, we're envious by nature. Uh, we're, I, we're, we're strifeful people by nature. Amen. And when uh, mankind is turned loose, uh, without any control whatsoever, he becomes an animal, just pretty much say it. And uh, I believe that the Bible speaks in one place over there, I believe it's in the book of Peter, uh, that or it might be Hebrews, I can't remember now, it's been a while since I read it, uh, but it talks about natural brute beast fitted to destruction. And uh, you know, when you read and study on that, it's kind of hard to understand uh, but friend, but when uh, when God draws His Spirit away from an individual, now you'll find in Second Thessalonians uh, chapter two, uh, this is talking about uh, just before the appearance of the Antichrist, He's coming back. Now we talked about the the rapture of the church just a while ago, and uh, you know there's coming a day and time where God's going to send strong delusions to all mankind uh, down here in this world. Uh, and especially to those that have heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and believe not the truth, that uh, they've heard the truth, uh, but they've shunned the truth and they've turned away from the truth. God's going to send them strong delusions that they might believe the lie. Talking about the lie that what? That the Antichrist is bringing down here into this world when he comes. Uh, this one world order that they're trying to set up, this one world system that they're trying to set up, 
Yes, it will be here, friend. That's, that's an evident fact. The Bible speaks of it. Uh, it's given over there. It, there's a ten federated kingdom fixing to be established. Uh, Babylon's going to raise its head once again uh, from the days of old. Uh, Jezebel's going to rule. Uh, you know, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a bad time during the time of great tribulation down here when Satan has his way uh, with mankind, uh, but friend. But they'll still be they'll still be a handful of people down here. Uh, friend in this world that will give their own life's blood for the cause of Christ. Now I talked a little bit about that last, last week and I hope and pray I didn't cause you any uh, hard uh, uh, thinking about that. Uh, uh, but we're living in the day of grace right now and uh, God saves us by grace through faith, not of works, at least any man should boast. Friend, you and I are not working our way into the family of God right now. It's a gift. God gave it as a gift. And we, we've made a little, 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 a little illustration concerning a $100 bill. And uh, friend, it's free right now to you. But if you shun uh, the Holy Spirit of God and you shun the truth of God's word and you turn your back on the truth of God's word, uh, when the rapture of the church comes, and it's coming soon. Uh, there'll be strong delusions given unto you. And you will wholeheartedly believe in what this, the Antichrist, that's Satan, the bodily form of Satan, friend, down here on this earth, uh, uh, is going to bring the message he's going to bring. Well, he's going to bring a message of peace and safety for three and a half years. And they seven years of tribulation the Bible uh, lays out. And that first three and a half years, it's going to be a time of no war. It's going to be a time of no uh, uh, peace and safety. Uh, the days of movement been going on for years ago that talks about that mankind's going to evolve. Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, mankind's not evolving. They're devolving. Amen. Uh, they're going back in. Uh, you know, what we have accomplished uh, since our little nation, and it's a young nation, uh, established on the word of God and on the truth of God's word and on, on our constitution and on uh, our bill of rights and all of the things that were given by our forefathers and, and a lot of it lines up with the word of God. Uh, friend, we have walked away from that as a nation. Uh, we've turned our back on the living God as a nation. Uh, we've allowed ungodly things to come into our nation. And uh, friend, there's, uh, you, you know, there's a payday coming for that. And when that payday comes, friend, uh, I hope and pray that somewhere or another, if, if, if this will be uh, recorded somewhere or another, and if somebody needs a, a little help and everything, uh, friend, maybe you can uh, uh, look back and say, well, I was warned. And we were warned. Yes, you were. And yes, you are. And God's word warns us to be ready in the hour that you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Uh, friend. Now then, let's go back to our scripture verse. And he says, uh, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white. Now we dealt with the white raiment just a little bit last week. And uh, we read some scripture to you. Uh, friend, God takes uh, the, the blackness of sin that's down in your heart and soul when you're lost and undone. And he takes red blood. Uh, the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary, friend, and he cleanses you and makes you white as snow. Amen. Uh, amen. You say, can, how, uh, how, do you do, how do you describe that? I can't, but, it, but God does. God knows, and God have, knows how. And friend, when you get on the other side, you'll be given white robes. Uh, friend, you'll be, given, uh, you'll be clothed in white, pure and holy, without spot, without blemish. Amen. Why? Because Jesus Christ made you that way. And if you'll accept what Jesus done down in, the, uh, in your heart and soul, friend, you'll stand before God one of these days arrayed in white raiment. Amen. And you say, well, overcoming seems like a, you know, a hard thing to do. Well, let's look at that a little bit more. Friend, now, if you're trying to overcome the world and you're trying to overcome uh, the, what the world is offering to you and, uh, the powers of Satan and, uh, uh, the, the lusts of the flesh, uh, the desire to get, 
you know, to have a, a lot of money. Now, the money's all right, but the love of money, uh, friend, is not good. Amen. Uh, it, you know, the love of money is, will cause you a lot of problems. You know, we all need a little money to get by down here in this world. But now, and preached last couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, I can't remember, on, be, on being content uh, with those things that you have. Amen. Now, that's hard to do, too. Uh, why? Because there's a constant draw on you to want to have more and more and more and more and more. Uh, amen. And, uh, you know, if we just be, if try our best to be content with those things that we have. Amen. Now, to have the Holy Spirit of God and the love of God living inside of you, it makes it a little easier. But friend, if you're out there and you're lost and you're undone and you're trying to turn over another leaf in your, in your life, uh, think about this. How many times, uh, if you have problems with drugs, how many times have you tried to quit using drugs? Oh, I'm going to quit. I, I'll never do that again. Boy, I tell you what, I'm lucky I made it through this last episode. I'm not going to do that no more. And just as sure, just as sure as you pay attention to what the body wants. See, it's an addiction. An addiction. Drugs is an addiction. Alcohol is an addiction. Uh, food is an addiction. Sexual pleasure is an addiction. Uh, I mean, you can just go on and just name thing after thing after thing after thing. Fishing is an addiction. Hunting is an addiction. Uh, there's so many things that's out here in this world. Going to a ball game uh, is an addiction. Uh, you know, arguing with your wife is an addiction. Uh, you say, what? <laughs> yeah, you don't need to be arguing with your wife, friend. And, and and ladies, you don't need to be arguing with your husband. There's nothing that can't be talked out and uh, and took care of down in your life. Uh, you man, uh, you think about that just a little bit. You know, what they're, what your children is seeing down here in this world uh, might mark them for life. Pay attention to what you say and what you do around where your children's at. Boy, you got that in there for nothing, didn't you? All right, let's move on here. But it talks about uh, uh, the overcomer. And the only way you and I can be an overcomer today is through what Jesus. Jesus came into this world and he overcame this world. You say, well, he was God in the flesh. Yes, he was. Amen. But the Bible says that he was tempted in all manners, just like you and I are. Amen. Yeah, he took upon himself a body of flesh. And when he took upon himself that body of flesh, friend, he took upon himself the nature of mankind also. Amen. Uh, but Jesus overcame those things. You say, well, he, he had he had something that we don't, that we don't have. He had the power of God. Yes, he was. He was God in the flesh, friend. But he laid that he laid that the royal diadem down, just for a little while, and he took upon himself the body of flesh, Amen. That he might be uh, that he might know just exactly what tempts you, what, what makes you work, what drives you. And I mean, even though God created Adam in the beginning. And he put all of these things in there. And you and I are made in the likeness, in the image, in the likeness of God. Friend, uh, we're made that way. And uh, uh, But to become an overcomer, we have to go the way that Jesus went. Amen. We've got to be able to overcome, to walk away. Jesus lived a sinless, spotless life down here in this world. And you say, that's an impossibility for me to do. Yes, you can't, friend. If you couldn't do that, if you could do, if you could live a sinless, spotless life down here in this world, you don't need to call on the Lord Jesus Christ to save you because you're righteous enough to get into heaven. Now, you can take that however you want to take it this morning. But friend, but because you was born into this world in a body of flesh and, you, and Adam and Eve sinned and you took upon yourself uh, or, or it was placed on you, uh, friend, the sinful nature. Uh, you have to have a Savior, friend, when you come to the age of accountability, when you know the difference between right and wrong and, and, and you understand what you're doing and what you're not doing, friend, you are at that age of accountability. You're accountable to God for your actions down here in this world. 
uh, you man. Now, Jesus said, Oh, thou suffer the little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven, friend. Uh, those little ones, when they're coming up, uh, before they understand what right and wrong is and before they know uh, how to yield uh, the, the things of the body, friend, they're pure before God. Uh, they are. They're pure before God. And, uh, friend, if you've got a child that is uh, handicapped to the point where they uh, 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 don't have the ability to learn uh, or something other like that right there, uh, friend, they'll be, if they live down here 40, 50, 60 years, friend, uh, or however long they live, uh, they're still pure before God if they was born into this world uh, in that kind of capacity, friend. Uh, they're, they're God's special little angels. That's what I like to call them. And, uh, and they are. Uh, and if they, they're, they're pure before God. Uh, but if they ever get to that point in their lives, uh, uh, you and I, when we get to that, I guess that's how I should have bring that out. When you and I get to that point in our life where we know the difference between right and wrong, friend, uh, we have to be, leave, we have to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved by God's marvelous grace. Because it's an impossibility for you to overcome the world without uh, the help of God. If you understand what I'm saying, let's look at that again. But he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Now, when you become an overcomer, uh, you're saved by God's marvelous grace, and God's going to clothe you. And then he says, and I will not blot your name out of the book of life. Now, let's deal with that just a moment, the book of life. Uh, there, is, uh, there are several books. Now, the book Revelation chapter uh, 20 talks about, and the books were open, and that word's plural. Uh, it said the books were open, and also another book was open, which is uh, the Lamb's book of the life, the, Lamb, the book of life, friend. Uh, now, let's put it this way right here. When I was lost and undone without a Savior, October the 3rd, 1956, God played, uh, uh, told his recording angel uh, to record my birth. I was born into this world. Amen. And I like to go all the way back to conception. And uh, because the Psalms uh, 139, I believe it is, talks about that we were fearfully and wonderfully made. And God knew us before our substance uh, was formed. He, and our members, uh, he already knew uh, that I would have 10 fingers and 10 toes when I was born. He already knew what I looked like. He already knew uh, how many hairs would fall off of my head by the time I lived out my life down here. God knows, friend, on those things. Uh, but we won't deal too awful much with that right there. But he, and I was talking about uh, the book of life. In other words, uh, uh, my name was written. David was born into this world October the 3rd, 1956. I took my first breath of air, uh, fresh air. And... Uh, <clears throat> when uh, my name was penned there. And up until that point of time, from that point of my birth, up until the time I became uh, a sinner. In other words, I understood the difference between right and wrong. Amen. I was in that little period of time. I, I call it the grace of God. If, I, if something had happened to me, if I'd have got uh, sick or something other like that there and, and or got killed in a car wreck or, or something like that there or... Uh, maybe sudden death syndrome, whatever they call that now, SIDS or whatever it is that happened to me when I was just little, I'd have went right straight back to heaven where, you know, I was sent from heaven. Uh, I'd have went right straight back to heaven. I'd have been pure before God. Uh, you man. But from that time that I, you know, uh, that recording angel, and I was a mean little boy, uh, and I'm sure there was a whole lot of stuff wrote down and uh, on me, but everything that I did, uh, was being written in a book, and uh, uh, I was written and I was was being written in the book. That recording angel was recording all those things. But there come a day and time when God brought forth the, the Holy Spirit into my life, showed me through the Word of God that I was lost and undone without a Savior. Uh, amen. And I yielded my heart and life and asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart and soul. 
uh, at that time, at that time, that recording angel took that book, that book right there, he closed it up. And he walked over there and he cast it as far as the east is from the west. In one place it's written, uh, never to be remembered against me anymore. Uh, and then I believe it's in the book of Micah in the Old Testament. Uh, it says that it was cast into the depths of the sea. Never to be remembered against me anymore. That was the, the recording angel that recorded the sin and my life without God up until that point. But when God came into my life, the Bible said there was a, a, another book was open. And the Bible tells me uh, that my works and my deeds, whether they be good or bad, are recorded in that book. In other words, I was born again. Now, my first birth was recorded in a book up until my second birth. See, I was born twice, but I'm only going to die once. Amen? Think about that. Uh, the, the second book that God gave me was the book of remembrance, not to judge me whether I'm saved or lost, but to judge me according to the rewards that I might have one of these days when I enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, friend, when you accept, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, the old book is thrown away, a new book's written, and he'll judge you according to the, the, the works and the deeds you do and the rewards that you'll have one of these days. And then when you stand at the, at the judgment seat of Christ, you'll receive those rewards and he'll, you'll hear these words, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many. And you'll be with God in heaven throughout all eternity. But now then, notice what he said here. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed with me in white raiment. And I will not blot his name out of the book of life. Now then, now let's, this gets on in. To another judgment. Amen. Now I've just talked about the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, and, the, and the life of a saved person. Someone that has received the Lord Jesus Christ. But friend if you're out here in this world today. Uh, whether you live to be 100 or 150. It don't matter. Or whether you're. Uh, you know. You die as a teenager or whatever. Friend if you die before. Uh, you come to the age of accountability. You're going to go to heaven. Simple as that. You're going to heaven. But after you come to the age of accountability and you know the difference between right and wrong and you shun to call on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Uh, John uh, 14, 6 says uh, that there's, there's no other name given. Friend, I, I mean, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Uh, that's absolute. I mean, there's, I mean, it don't matter how much you do, uh, what kind of religious stuff that you get into, friend, how many churches you join, uh, how much money you give to the, any kind of organization, uh, how good you are to your neighbor, uh, all of these different things, that's all works in the eyes of God. All that'll get you to heaven, friend, is believing and trusting in the work that Jesus Christ done when he came down here into this world. Then you'll become an overcomer. You will overcome this world and the things of this world through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you'll be in white robe one of these days, friend, if you accept him. But if you shun to accept him, in other words, if you believe not the truth and what I'm trying to tell you today by the help of God, friend, uh, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, over there that there's a thing called the great white throne of judgment. Uh, and God himself, not the Lord Jesus Christ, God himself will sit on that throne. And the books, the Bible says, and the books were open. And the books were open. Uh, and when they open up the books, it'll be your life laid out. Uh, you won't be able to stand there and argue with God. That's just not going to happen. If you do uh, are allowed to speak and you say, well, look what I've done and, 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 and all that I've, you know, and all of my goodness and all that there. And he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. Uh, the only way that God knows us, friend, is through the blood of his own son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and your name will be, ble will be blotted out of the book of life. And you'll be cast into the lake of fire where that you'll spend eternity, night and day, uh, in torment. You say, preacher, that's awful and everything. Surely we serve a God uh, that won't do that. Uh, don't, ain't he a God of love? Yes, he is a God of love. And he made you a way, friend. He sent the very jewel of heaven, his son, down here into this world. And they treated him uh, uh, very badly down here and uh, the world has hated him uh, because why because they they get in the way of mankind's nature uh, it gets in the way uh, friend when you become an overcomer you you learn to overcome the lust of the flesh you learn to overcome the need for greed you load to, you learn to overcome hatred you learn to overcome all of these things uh, that's the, the, the body is. Amen. Now this body that you're looking at right here, friend, uh, according to the course of nature, it's going to die. I'm already showing age signs. My beard's gray. Uh, you know, uh, my, my sight's not as good as it was. My knees hurt. My back hurts. Uh, they ain't much that don't hurt me sometime or another during the day. Uh, and everything hits wearing out and everything. But you know what about it? This right here does not have any provision. There's not one thing in here anywhere written that tells me that my body is going to live forever. It can't. It can't live forever, friend, in this natural state that it's in. Uh, it can't live forever. When, uh, now, Adam and Eve lost that. God created Adam and Eve over there, and he prepared a place in eastward in Eden. He put them in there. And... and he said over there, he said, the day that you eat this fruit, you shall surely die. Uh, amen. And I'll, I'll, I'll record, it's recorded, friend, in the word of God that Adam and Eve died. They died. They're not still alive. They died. Amen. And every person that's been born into this world, friend, uh, has, has, has met uh, with death, save those things that God did. Amen. Now, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. Uh, now, I don't know the full scope of that, and, I, and maybe one of these days I'll ask God. And then the Bible said that Elijah was taken out in a whirlwind of fire uh, uh, over there. And Elisha was, uh, took up his mantle and carried on the ministry. Uh, friend, uh, the Bible says over there that now Moses died. Uh, it said that... Uh, that uh, the angel of God wrestled with Satan, uh, and, and but even the angel of God never brought a railing, a railing accusation uh, against Satan, friend. Satan is powerful; uh, he is. And when you say, "Oh, I can stand up to the, I can stand up to him," you better look out. You're headed for a fall, and great will be the fall thereof, friend. Uh, you're no match for Satan. Satan can destroy you uh, just in a heartbeat. Uh, you say, well, is that possible? Yes, it is, friend. Uh, uh, when God turns a person over uh, for the destruction of the flesh, Satan destroys him. Simple as that. You mean God turns people over? Yes, when they refuse. Uh, when they refuse to listen to the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And, and, and God sends conviction down in their heart and soul. And they know that they need to be, uh, they need to ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart. And then they look around and they, and through their own body, they, 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 they say, God, I don't want nothing to do with you. I don't want nothing to do with this Holy Spirit. I don't want nothing to do with your church and everything. God turns them over to reprobate minds, friend, uh, for the destruction of the flesh. That's, uh, that's scary, isn't it? Uh, there's more in this than uh, Bible than just a few little songs that's been written out of the pages of it. Uh, friend, God is a God of love. Yes, he is. But he's also a God of wrath. And he will visit. And he did in the days of old on people that sinned uh, down to the third and the fourth generation. He visited people in that day and time. Uh, friend, you and I, this is a personal relationship. Now, I can't give an account for my wife, and I can't give an account for my son or my grandchildren or my daughter. 
uh, and everything. They happen to give an account for themselves. Friend, it's a personal relationship. I urge you by the mercy of God, friend, uh, to be an overcomer. Then let me read verse 6 and I'll be done. Uh, he said, and he, sh and, and he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Now, that Spirit, friend, is a ministering angel that speaks to you. Uh, amen. And God sends angels to speak to you. And you can find that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, I believe it is. And uh, let me read that to you. It'll take me just a second to find it. And uh, there is some... Uh, Wonderful, wonderful scripture throughout the book of Hebrews, and but I believe it's in chapter four, verse one. Well, let me find it. Maybe it's chapter one, verse four. read that just a while ago well anyway but it talks about a place there that uh that uh, uh that angels are ministering spirits in other words they come to minister unto us to speak to us and friend they'll speak to your heart and let you know that you know what they come to do they come to lift up the darling son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. They come to uh, to tell you about him. So it behooves you and I uh, to have a ear to the spirit of God. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. And then the latter part of five there, and I know I skipped over it, but I'll speak real briefly on it. He said, I will, I will confess thy name before my father and before his angels. Amen. Uh, the Jesus, uh, friend, if you belong to him, he confesses you before the father, go read John 17. And when you read John 17, take time to read it slow, look at the verses and look how proud that Jesus is of you who the born again believers in Christ Jesus, the ones who have accepted the blood that Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary for the salvation of their souls. Uh, amen. Look, uh, just read that and look at it. Boy, I tell you what, it'll bless your heart and your soul. That's what God's given us today. I appreciate you. Amen.